lot of drug experience um, through my time as an agent and then eventually a team leader there for Casper. And then about a year ago, a little less than a, a year ago, I uh, took a promotion and to a commander position at headquarters. So now I work out of the Cheyenne office. So uh, a little bit more removed um, from all the day-to-day -day drug activity, but I also manage our HIDA program, which is our high intensity drug trafficking area. Um, I, so I supervise that, so I still have a lot of my fingers into uh, what's going on with drug trends as I report them on uh, up the chain to, to HIDA, who's one of our major funding sources for, for drug investigations. Uh, so that being said, I'm going to talk about drug trends today, and it, I, am, I do have a gamut of different drugs that we're going to talk about, but this is your presentation, so please feel free to derail me, uh, take me down whatever path if I've got knowledge to talk about it. I'm more than happy to talk about that. This is your time uh, and your, your chance to, to learn <laughs> as much as I can teach. So. Uh, so, you know, current on drug trends, you know, some of these are new drug trends, some of them are not, you know, up there on the slide, it talks about violence associated with, with drug crimes. That's, that's been true uh, way back, you know, forever since, and that has not changed. If anything, I, you know, I'll, I'll present later on some of the things that we're seeing that is alarming and, and the more concern uh, with drug crimes. Uh, also on the slide is the amount of people in the prisons and jails that uh, have drug problems. Uh, that comes as no surprise to anybody that's done this work for very long. Uh, but, you know, actually, I would say my surprise is that they say two thirds of those sentenced to jail uh, report drug dependence or, or abuse. I, you know, if I were asked, uh, not seeing that slide, I'd say it's more like 90%. Uh, so that's the only shocker for me on that uh, on that aspect. So the drugs that we're going to talk about today, uh, this is how I give my presentation. What do we see in Wyoming? So let's not talk about something that we don't really see. I'm not going to spend much time on it. Uh, we see as number one. So this is DCI drug seizures, uh, basically for the year 2023. I didn't run the the newest numbers, but. Really, it's just to give you a representation of what we see. So the, the highest column over there is marijuana. As DCI, we spend almost zero time focusing on marijuana. Uh, and it's not to say that marijuana shouldn't be enforced, but if we spend our time there, we're not spending time on methamphetamine and fentanyl, which is killing people. So we, we just have to uh, put our priorities in, in areas where we feel like we're doing better good. So, but that being said, it's our number one drug that we seize. And that's just because, make no, no doubt about it, marijuana is associated with all these other drugs. We're doing a fentanyl investigation. We're, we're intercepting them coming back from Colorado with fentanyl. They're most likely gonna have marijuana with them too. Uh, so the next column over uh, is the blue. Uh, that's fentanyl pills. Skip over two more, so skip over that yellow one and the purple to the brown, that is also fentanyl. So we're doing some adjustments on how we're, uh, we're aggregating those together. Uh, we were using different measurements, like sometimes we'd count out pills, sometimes we'd go by weight. Uh, so we, we've changed that and, and in the future I'll have one column that represents our fentanyl. Uh, but if you can essentially add those three together and get an idea of just how much fentanyl we're dealing with now. You know, methamphetamine has always, aside from marijuana, methamphetamine has always been our, our, our drug of, of highest substance that we seize. Uh, but now fentanyl is, is their uh, equivalent. So then after that, okay, so the yellow column, that's, that's methamphetamine. And then in green, we, we skip down to heroin. Um, almost surprising that we even have that much heroin because once we started seeing fentanyl, heroin just bottomed out. There was no, not much of a market for heroin once fentanyl stepped in. Uh, then we've got cocaine. Actually, cocaine has kind of seen an uptick. Uh, we'll talk about that. And then hallucinogenics, then more marijuana, and then more hallucinogenics. So that's what we're going to talk about. Uh, 
This slide is just focusing in on our fentanyl and meth methamphetamine, which is really what DCI is focusing in on at this time. It's our biggest threats. So over on the left is, is fentanyl. Um, we, in 2023, so this is year total, uh, not just to October like the previous slide. Uh, we see some approximately 45,000 grams of, of fentanyl. One pill is 0.1 grams. So 10 pills being a gram. Um, just to give you an idea, we're just, this is not our lab numbers. This is just our enforcement side of, of how much fentanyl is just getting seized. Now, a big disclaimer I'll throw it out now because I'm going to talk a lot about seizures, uh, including about U.S. Customs and Border, uh, their seizures. You're only going to seize a tenth of what's out there at best. You know, for every time that, that we get something, there's at least nine more loads that are going through. So just a little shocking how much fentanyl is coming into Wyoming and through Wyoming. Now, a lot of this, I mean, yes, some of this is pass-through stuff that we pass through uh, traffic that we intercept, um, whether that be us or whether it be more likely even the highway patrol type, type stuff. But, um, big numbers. And then on the, the methamphetamine, um, 27,000 plus grams of methamphetamine. So uh, I know we got some sugar packets over here um, for good representation. That is approximately a gram. So this is what we see is 27,000 plus of these. It takes some Serious users, maybe it's going to take a gram of methamphetamine to get high. Other users, it's going to take a quarter gram, so one quarter of this. I front loaded the presentation, so we're going to talk mostly about fentanyl and then we're going to go more quickly through the rest of it. Uh, so, fentanyl, I, as, you, as you well know, you know. I, I think there's been a lot of education out there. There could always be more. Uh, but we, we should all know that one, one pill could kill. I think that's been publicized pretty well. DEA, I can give them credit for that. Uh, they, they did a good job of that. So, and this is the pill that we're talking about. We, we started with the powder of fentanyl. That's what we saw back around, you know, 2017-ish. Um, and then we moved to the pill in about 2020. And this is uh, by far the most common pill. So they call it, it looks like an oxy, they call it street oxys, fake oxys. Uh, and it, in all appearances, it's, it's very similar to an oxy. It's 50 to 100 times more potent than, than morph, morphine. And the top uh, left up there, as you're looking at it, is this a representation of what a fatal dose is? So those are just small little vials. You've got heroin. You know, it's got the the amount down there, which is not very much to be a fatal amount. Uh, then next over, you got fentanyl, and it's it's a minuscule amount. The next one over is carfentanil, which is an elephant tranquilizer. And we have seized just recently car fentanyl in the state of Wyoming. So we talk about how deadly fentanyl is. You know, car fentanyl is is even is substantially worse. So one other thing that I want to clear up is you've got this pill, which those are they're small. They're like an aspirin pill. There's only a small amount of actual fentanyl in that. There, there's a large amount of binder that is in that. So there's been, and I, I bring this up because we, when we talk about legislation recently, uh, we're having a hard time still with marijuana and marijuana edibles and uh, brownies and uh, cookies and sodas and all that. Every, I just want to start doing an education Every drug has a carrier. No drug is pure. You know, back in the day, we would get methamphetamine that was, you know, in the 40s percent pure. Uh, and it has got substantially more pure over time. And now we get methamphetamine that's in the 90s on a regular basis, 90% purity. But it still has a binder. Uh, it still has a substance that they combine with that 
uh, to bulk it up and, and distribute it. Uh, to, to just make the fill, they need that binder. But uh, we, we use a device called a TrueNARC, and we shoot those fills, and it's sometimes hard because some, it's a laser, and sometimes if it doesn't hit the fentanyl, it comes back with no results. So you gotta zap it again, zap it again. Third time, maybe you finally get um, a positive result for fentanyl because you're hit it because it is so much binder. So uh, that's my educational piece for the day. Um, we're having a hard time with edibles because they feel like there's so much binder, they don't want to hold people culpable for the, the amount of THCs that, that is in there. But that's true with every drug. Every drug has binders with it, and it's not pure. Uh, everything is a mixture. Uh, we saw this for a bit. We haven't seen it for a little bit, but rainbow, rainbow fentanyl, that was beginning to be uh, the new trend. But for some reason, we went right back to the blues. Another very, very common name. I, I apologize, I skipped over that as a slang term for fentanyl. And then, then they mixed it all up, um, and I don't think we ever saw this in Wyoming, but we were uh, advised of it to watch out for it. And then, so we, we go from 2020 to 2023, and we're just seeing the blues, and you know we hadn't seen any powder. And then all of a sudden, in spring of 2023, we start seeing powdered fentanyl again. And about the same time, we start seeing other stimulants mixed with with fentanyl. So with the powdered fentanyl. So most specifically being cocaine. It was was a beginning trend in, in the spring of 2023. Uh, and that wasn't just for Wyoming, that was nationwide. In fact, we got plenty of heads up before we started seeing it. Uh, we prepared to see cocaine shipments laced with fentanyl. Which is uh, you know, interesting, right? Because cocaine is a stimulant, fentanyl is a depressant, so now you can mix the two together. Uh, it's uh, just interesting that you would take a depressant and a stimulant and mix it. Uh, on that note, we, we do see polyuse though a lot. So, what, I, as the team leader in Casper, we were getting repeated calls at about five o'clock in the morning during the summertime that, uh, of, a, of a fentanyl overdose, and, or what appeared to be a fentanyl overdose. What, what is going on at five o'clock in the morning? Why are we getting all these overdoses at that, that time? So one morning, I said, that's it, I'm going out. I'm going out on this one. I'm gonna kind of try to get to the bottom of this and see what's going on. Well, what I find out is what I should have thought of before. They're, they've been using methamphetamine for a day and a half, and they're starting to see the sun come up for yet another day without sleeping, but they can't sleep because they're still spun up on a, a stimulant, methamphetamine. So their solution is take a depressant like fentanyl, but they were obviously um, taking too much fentanyl and causing these repeat overdoses. And that was the exact scenario on that day. They'd been partying for a long time, and they start seeing the sun come up, and they're like, we got to sleep. So they start popping fentanyl, and then take too much fentanyl. Uh, a little, I already explained a little bit of this, except for the prices. So, I mean, very, very profitable, and it was even more profitable. The price has, has dropped substantially. Uh, but. They can purchase uh, a kilo of powdered fentanyl for $2,000 and convert it into pill form, which is, yeah, 666,000 uh, fentanyl pills from that $2,000 purchase, and then sell those pills for $1.50 to $20 per pill. It's, it's less than that now. We're nowhere near $20 a pill. At one point in time in Wyoming, uh, about two, Two good two years ago, we were seeing prices of even thirty-five dollars per pill of fentanyl. So they're manufacturing this for pennies and selling, and eventually, as it moves through the market into rural Wyoming, they're selling it for thirty-five dollars a pill. 
Now we're now we will see it if you're buying in bulk as low as dollar fifty, but that's not a typical price. I mean, we're probably more around that four to eight dollars if you if you averaged it all out um, per pill. All right, so what's it, what's it look like when they're using it? Uh, this is the most common of, of what you would find. So they're smoking it like they smoke uh, heroin. So they're using foil, they call them foilies, uh, heating it from the underside, turning it into a vapor and ingesting that vapor. So they're doing that with the same thing with pills. The, the picture on your right is, is good representation of that where you know, they were probably burning those pills and then just wrap it back up, which is easy enough to do, and then use it again, you know, use another dose later. So this tube here, most likely like a tube to, to suck up the fumes, to inhale the fumes. And what are, what's the typical signs? Uh, so if somebody is going into overdose, uh, the way that this drug works is it uh, it affects your breathing in three different ways. Let's see if I can get on this uh, it, it basically uh, dampens the senses, sorry, going from the bottom up, um, to, of how much CO2 is exiting your body. It tells your brain, uh, it doesn't tell, it, it, it blocks the, the typical brain response of I need to take a breath. And then it just suppresses uh, breathing in general. So what, what an overdose looks like, and we've had this reported many times, is you know they went to their bedroom or we saw them on the couch and they were snoring, but their their breaths were far apart. Um, but it, but they were breathing. Well, probably they, that, that was more like an agonal breath um, because they had suppressed the breath so much that they just uh, they were on the downhill decline where they were they were just going to quit breathing eventually. So this ultimately it doesn't blow up your heart like methamphetamine does. It just tells your body it it suppresses your body's ability to know how to breathe is essentially what happens. They just quit quit breathing. Uh, other signs, a lot of these would be typical of, of any type of drug use if you're looking for, you know, this person's just not acting the same, um, you know, what, what could be going on here. You know, a lot of that is, you know, change of friends, um, change in what they found pleasurable, you know, avoidance of people that uh, are, that they used to be friends with that are doing good things. Um, and starting to hang around with the new friends that are not doing such good things. Uh, theft is on there. Um, that's, that's characteristic of almost every drug crime because eventually uh, it's just too expensive to keep up with. You know, loss of job, which contributes to, I, you know, I don't have the money, so I gotta find another way uh, to fund this. Overdoses, I think it's, fairly well publicized, so I'm probably not telling you anything new, but over 100,000 deaths attributed to fentanyl every year in the United States, and the number isn't going down. In fact, you can see just uh, how drastic the number has gone up. Uh, I'm sorry, that's drug overdose deaths, not just contributed to fentanyl on this slide. They talk about the three waves and now they talk about a fourth wave of uh, opioid epidemic. So we, we start with, with heroin, as I said, um, of interest to Wyoming, and you'll see it on the, on the slide there, um, Colorado's legalization of marijuana. We, we actually, that's when we saw heroin. We didn't have to deal with heroin in Wyoming, nor did we in South Dakota, the only time I dealt with heroin in, over in South Dakota was during the service rally. Uh, it was just not in these states. And come legalization, um, massive amounts of marijuana start coming into Wyoming, and right along with it was heroin. So then we saw this huge 
uh, uptick of opioid and opioid use, and eventually that transitions, once, once fentanyl hit the market, then it transitions, and we had the transition to, to fentanyl. So you, as you can see, as fentanyl, which is the synthetic opioid, skyrockets, you start seeing heroin and the pills decrease. Uh, we, we also saw, we did a case in 2016, 2017, of a doctor over in Casper, uh, and <coughs> just, it was really gaining speed where people had uh, transitioned to opioids. Uh, like I said, coming about 2012, that started, 2016, 2017, this doctor case where he was just uh, basically a, a drug dealer in a lab coat. And, you know, that, that really was spiking those pills. But then, uh, by the time that was wrapping up, then the fentanyl started coming in and the fentanyl pills started coming in. May I ask a quick yeah, question? Yeah, please. You have two arrows there, Colorado legalized marijuana, one between 2012 and 2013, and one in 2000 and 2001. So what that's that the, that's the medical marijuana. I apologize, I didn't explain that. The medical marijuana between 2000 and 2001, and the recreational marijuana between 2012 and 2013. Thank you. So now we've got the fourth wave that they talk about, and I'm, I apologize, it's cut off down there, the red. So the first three, uh, going back here, is uh, rise in prescription opioid overdose deaths, rise in heroin overdose deaths is the wave two, and then wave three, rise in synthetic opioid overdose deaths. Then you add on wave four, which is uh, synthetic opioids with a stimulant. So that goes back to we're mixing fentanyl and cocaine. And the, that's the, your red line where you start seeing that increase. Luckily in Wyoming, we do see everything a little bit late. Uh, so we do get a lot of heads up and then, but it, it does work its way here. And, and sometimes it's, it's quicker than what we expect. Other times it takes us a little bit longer. But we did start, we do see that, we are seeing it uh, on uh, our OD reports, overdose reports, I and mean, we see a lot of cross use between opioids and stimulants. As you can continue to see though, uh, that, the chart ends up 2021, you see those prescription opioids and heroin decreasing. It'd be great if we didn't have that huge increase, increase of synthetic uh, opioids. It was interesting when he was removed. There's quite a few people that will remember my comments at the time because it came after Ogden um, reportedly, I guess you should say, because it was reported and then he, they claimed that he claimed that didn't happen, but we all saw the letters where he made the chairmen of the board sign that we're going to do this and that and the other thing and we're not going to disobey. and. We're not going to disobey. I love that. I love that part. We're not going to disobey. <laughs> Pretty much. That's what I got yeah. from it. reading it is, aye, aye, Captain, we will follow your rule. It kind of made me look a little different at Driscoll. And then this year's well, made Well, and you didn't just look different. Let's come on. You gave him a nickname even. I gave him a nickname. He was saved in my phone still to this day as Dictator Driscoll. And I still don't <laughs> feel bad about that because Weston County hasn't seen him once leading up to this session. be great if we didn't have that huge increase, increase of synthetic uh, opioids. Just another chart to depict uh, the purple, sorry, that does get cut off down there at the bottom. Uh, the, so uh, the bottom layer is blue, which is sorry, fentanyl uh, without stimulants is the bottom layer. Um, fentanyl with stimulants is the purple. Uh, stimulants without fentanyl, so that's like your methamphetamines, uh, which have really, they've increased, but they've held somewhat consistent from 2016. And then uh, fatal overdoses without fentanyl or stimulants is the white up above. But the, the notable thing on that is, is the purple and just how much of an increase. So they're mixing these drugs together for use. 
So here in Wyoming, uh, this is plotting uh, overdoses, not, not overdose deaths, just any overdose. And this goes back to May of 2020 and ends with March of 2023. Uh, and you can see that, you know, come about November of 2022 is when we start really seeing a skyrocket effect here in Wyoming. And it continues on for uh, into 2023, even though the chart doesn't uh, represent that. So on that, I'll just back up a little bit. So that comes from a map called OD map. Uh, if you're in law enforcement and in probation, um, I think you can get access to it. I'll, you'll have my contact information, send me an email, I'll send it on to our coordinator um, for OD map. So OD map was started out in Baltimore, Washington, Baltimore, Haida, and they started tracking all their overdoses and then eventually they deployed it across the rest of the country and the data comes from EMS runs. So every EMS run in Wyoming goes into a program that I forget the name of right now. But that feeds into this OD map. So if it's an overdose, then we pick up that information or the system picks up that information. And it includes things like how was Narcan used? What's the suspected drug um, do you have? And then any other poly drugs. Also on the map is coroner data. So once it's delayed, obviously, because you gotta wait for the toxicology to come back from an overdose, but that's even more precise data. So then we, we get that fed into the map also. So on when you're looking at the map, which I think I have a, I maybe took a picture out, um, you can actually zoom in. You can't get down to actually identify a house of where the overdose was, but you can definitely get into the very tight neighborhood of where this overdose occurred at. So you can develop trends. I'll talk about that in just one second. Uh, so uh, on the map on the bottom, though, it's got that black box down there, total suspected overdoses. This is for Wyoming uh, from 2020 to 2023, so 2,906 uh, suspected overdoses. And then fatal overdoses, which is much more accurate um, because we're dealing with the coroner's report, uh, 342 from 2020 to 2023. So uh, trends. So one, uh, an agency up in Montana, uh, in the Missoula area, they figured out that if Missoula starts seeing overdoses by using OD map, uh, then they could. They knew that drugs were traveling both north and south out of Missoula on this highway, a uh, major thoroughfare. And they figured out that if Missoula saw overdoses on Tuesday, most likely on Wednesday, these towns that were, you know, 30 miles away would start seeing overdoses. And then on Thursday, these towns that were 100 miles away would start seeing overdoses. So they, they developed an alert system just based on OD map. And you can set up spike alerts, and they set up a spike alert for Missoula. So if they'd seen an overdose, uh, they would notify those communities that were further away, get ready, because you're most likely going to see overdoses because we're seeing them in, uh, in Missoula. And we, could, we do have spike alerts set up in Wyoming. Uh, in, in an, ours triggered on three, three events within a 24 hour. Uh, but admittedly, and we do get spike alerts, but admittedly, you know, once you start diving into the data, oftentimes it's one is methamphetamine, one is uh, a fentanyl, you know, and one is, you know, an alcohol overdose or something like that. So they do, they do work. Um, we haven't seen been able to put them to quite that use as, as they have out there in Montana. Uh, just another representation of Wyoming overdoses. Uh, this one came from the Wyoming Department of Health and de death certificate data. So this is, uh, these are deaths. And the, the light blue is fentanyl, and the dark blue on top of that would be all other drugs. Um, just representing that really the increase, if I haven't driven the point home enough, I mean, it's, that's the point, is this is just getting worse. Um, and 
There's there's not an end in sight yet. We haven't we haven't seen the peak for sure. Uh, okay, just a, another representation. Um, it's uh, the the top is any opioid, uh, and then they break it out by the orange line is heroin, the greenish. Uh, darker green line uh, that starts over there by the five is other opioids, natural and semi-synthetic, and then the blue line is the synthetic opioids. So the light blue line that is rising is is your fentanyl. All right. So how does how do we get all this? How does it become such a problem um, in Wyoming, let alone in the the U.S.? So you maybe have heard uh, China was a major major manufacturer of powdered fentanyl, so little restrictions from China or no restrictions from China to get fentanyl into Mexico, where it was either remained as powdered fentanyl and shipped into the U.S. or pill pre pill press and then shipped into the U.S. Uh, they are not the only one in the market though. India has stepped up into the market. Um, and we've also encountered, or, or I should say on a national level, we've encountered that coming into Mexico also. And then from there, it's most likely, most often just brought across the border. We, I mean, there's, there are sometimes boat shipments, plane shipments, and so forth, but a lot of times it's just, it's walked literally across the border and into the United States. It follows the same traditional drug routes that have been in place for years and years and years for methamphetamine, uh, where, where it's going north and going east. Uh, I get it. I'm fortunate. I, I am fortunate. I, I've had the chance to be across this country and work with law enforcement all across the country. And it's really interesting to hear that we, we have had a methamphetamine problem here forever, but places like Chicago still does not really have that much methamphetamine. They're all crack cocaine. Uh, it's this interesting, and we, we have hardly no crack cocaine. Uh, but it's, it's interesting to see that even though you see that it does distribute all across the country, the, the problems are not exactly the same uh, across our country. All right, so border, border seizures is what this chart represents. And the, they're based, uh, broken down on years. So the blue line is 2021. The orange line, uh, the lighter orange line, I should say, that's lower on the graph is 2022. Uh, as you see, 2022 spikes in June uh, of that year. Um, and carries on into 2023 uh, over there in October, which is the dark purplish line or almost black. Uh, 2023 was just a horrific year for seizures down there on the border. And I, I had a chance to go down to Arizona recently and in Phoenix and talk about the border and hear, hear about what they're doing, working on the border. They're completely overwhelmed. So the fact that in 2023 they can have that substantial amount of seizures uh, is incredible to me, just because I know what else they're dealing with. Uh, we were they they brought out what they seized just in the Phoenix office from the border um, through the weekend, and I mean it'll rival what we probably do in an entire year here in Wyoming. Just massive amounts of drugs just from one weekend, the weekend that we happen to be down there. And then uh, the orange line that's higher on the chart that, that cuts off, that's 2024 uh, so far. This is right out on the internet. Everybody could look at it and, and track and see what kind of problem. Because the problems that they have there on the border is the problems that we inherit uh, later on. And I mean like maybe a week later, maybe a month later, maybe a day later. Um, they have one case where we were tracking the individual and we tracked him across the border and within 24 hours he was in capital Wyoming. So, and again, I go back to what I say, you know, what they seize, you know, for every one item that they seize, there's easily 10 that, that got by. If, if not more than that, 
because they're just so overwhelmed with what they're trying to do down there. Just another breakdown of fentanyl um, uh, seized at the border. So 2021, 2022, 2023, and then 2024, which you know, we're still at the beginning of. But just substantial amounts that are still just pouring across. And if they're seeing it and they're seizing it, we're going to see it and we're going to, we're going to have to deal with the consequences of it. So Wyoming seizures of fentanyl, uh, I gave you some of that before. Uh, again, in, in 2023, we started to clean up how we were reporting this, like not just re reporting this over here by pills, this over here by grams, and, and this over here actually a third way. So, but 2023 um, for us in seizures, because you can actually add those three columns together for fentanyl seizures in Wyoming and see where it compares to 20, uh, 2021 and 2022. Arrests, I'll, I'll be, I'll just sum it up. Um, our arrests remain consistent uh, from 2021, 2022, and 2023. All right, other trends. So, this is more trends of 2023. Um, you can go to and buy over-the-counter Narcan, uh, which is great. Uh, it's, I mean, it's great to have that out in the community. The problem is, is a lot of people use drugs alone, and you can't administer. I will be shocked if you can administer Narcan to yourself when you're in the in an episode of an overdose. We find these people dead with a needle in their arm, like a when they're shooting up heroin, how it's no different. How can they function and give themselves a dose of narcan? It's just not very realistic. Uh, haven't heard of that happening yet today. Now, if they party with a buddy um, and they're not using the same substance at the same time and overdosing at the same time, then maybe their buddy can administer the narcan. But it does it does give a little bit of a false sense of security that this is available so I don't have to be as cautious. I can use more because I think I'm going to be able to save myself a little harder. But it is available and it's, it's a good move. It's just, it comes with precautions. Uh, fentanyl test strips, you can buy those on the internet. You can buy them uh, at Walgreens, uh, maybe even Walmart. So now you can go out and test and find out if you have fentanyl. Uh, which is which is good um, if if you think that you're buying one drug on the street which you shouldn't do right uh, but you want to make sure that you got your an oxycodone and not fentanyl uh, then you can you can test that it also works very well for drug dealers to make sure that they're getting the product they expect to get so with every good comes another a, a consequence maybe a negative consequence because um, we are we don't want to facilitate drug dealers to make too much, helping them make sure that they're getting the, the good product that they're expecting to get. Uh, 2023 legislation, not our legislative session, that's just wrapping up right now. Uh, but we, we finally got a change in our, uh, our statute for drug endangered children. So for years we've had a methamphetamine drug endangered child. We finally have added fentanyl into that. We went through the whole heroin episode where we had a whole bunch of heroin overdoses and we didn't manage to get any legislative change on that. It's okay, like I said, heroin hardly exists anymore. Everybody uses fentanyl. So thankfully we have where it's, it's a crime to, to possess, sell, distribute, uh, use uh, both heroin and, fent and or fentanyl around a child. Uh, plans to safe care. I started tracking this a little bit closer. This should be implemented by now. Uh, it, it is implemented, I'm sure. Uh, plans to safe care was a requirement upon doctors and medical providers caring for pregnant women um, to come up with a plan of, of safe care if they were a, a user, um, admitted user, discovered user, however that might work. Uh, it was a requirement of those doctors to put a plan in place. They're working with DFS, um, great, great stuff. It just didn't have much 
Uh, I, I started getting pulled into it and it just didn't have a law enforcement role in it. So I, I let them march on and I spent my time with other uh, topics that I needed to be involved with. So, uh, so the, many states and the feds have bills that say if you deliver drugs that causes a death, then you can be held responsible for that. We have, in Wyoming, we have a statute that you can kind of make work. It's a misdemeanor, so we could write them a ticket if they cause somebody's death. Um, this is what a misdemeanor is. Uh, but uh, we, in 2023, uh, that it was presented, you know, the big three, which was uh, methamphetamine, fentanyl, and, and heroin, I'm nearly certain. Um, but uh, if, if you delivered that drug and you caused somebody else's death, you could be held criminally liable for that. And unfortunately, because I think it's, it's a good bill, I think all the other states that have such legislation have found it very useful, and, but uh, it, it did not pass. So this story, uh, it's out there on the internet. Uh, one of the cases that we worked out of Casper, uh, where a one-year-old child um, died because of a drug overdose in a home. And this is, this is what I'm talking about. Um, we did charge her with child endangerment, which is felony, up to five years. And then we charged her uh, with criminally negligent homicide, which is a misdemeanor, uh, punishable by up to a year in jail. Or, but don't forget, you can write a ticket for misdemeanor. So that, that failed, and it did not get brought back up in 2024. Uh, we, uh, the xylazine, we had a, a big threat of xylazine. Um, it, it's a substance that is nasty because it causes degradation of your uh, skin and you know you end up with big holes in your skin and muscle and luckily that was kind of coming in and it seems like it's faded back out they called it trank um, but luckily we're not seeing much of that at the uh, pyro that also kind of came and went pretty quick uh, pyro was the drug we we got a bulletin out of Denver that said, watch out for this drug. Turned out we had already dealt with it two weeks prior on a drug overdose. Very powerful, uh, 20 times more powerful than fentanyl, which is why we dealt with an overdose. Uh, so methamphetamine, moving on. Any questions about fentanyl before we move into methamphetamine? Respectful of your time, and I see that we, we ate up a lot of it talking about fentanyl. So. Uh, so just that, that picture depicts just how big these shards of methamphetamine can be. Uh, you know, we've had some instances where law enforcement being unfamiliar with just how big these shards can be. Um, actually, they, luckily they seized it, but they didn't uh, hang on to the person. Luckily the person was apprehended later. But uh, down there in Arizona, they had black methamphetamine. And I, we've never seen that up there, up here. And it looked like, uh, it, it actually, if you put it on a campfire from the night before, uh, with the logs that have been charred, it would look exactly like that. I could walk right by it and not even know what I was looking at. It was incredible. And they were, they were as big as logs um, that were like logs that you had partially burned in a fire. Uh, these bags over here and those bags, I mean, those are probably uh, one to 2.2 pound bags, so either a, a pound or a kilo of methamphetamine. All these pictures are uh, right here from Wyoming, many of them from Casper, my time that I spent there. It really is trying to depict just how large these shards of, of methamphetamine could be. Uh, that's 27 grams over there, but uh, that's probably like a three ounce rock of methamphetamine. You'll see the guns in there. I'll talk a little bit more about that. I'm gonna skip this price chart because I'm gonna just talk about this price chart. So one of our jobs at, in DCI is we use undercover agents or we use confidential informants to go out and buy controlled substances. So we tr obviously track that money really well, buy controlled funds. Um, and, and all that tracking. 
So in 2017, as we go out and buy methamphetamine, now sometimes we're buying a, a gram, but lots of times we're buying an ounce, or maybe we're buying a quarter pound. So some of this is you get a discount for buying a bulk, just like at Costco. Uh, but if we average that out, per gram we're paying $82 per gram of methamphetamine. I remember even before this time, you know, you could expect more like $150 per gram of methamphetamine. That's pretty expensive habit. Uh, when you're talking one gram might just get you high at best four times. Maybe it's just gonna be one to two times. So $150 in 2017, it was $82. Uh, and then you just watch as it declines. So in 2023, again, averaging it out, you know, sometimes we're buying even into the pounds, but on average, we're paying $16.33 per gram of methamphetamine. So we've turned what was a very expensive, dangerous habit into something that is super affordable. I don't smoke, so I had to look it up. Like, how much can I go buy a pack of cigarettes for? It? And I think it was about eight, what was it, $8 a pack, something like that. Any smokers in here? cigarettes for it and I think it was about eight push eight dollars a pack or something like that. Any smokers in here? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm like, well, I mean here I got potentially four uses out of that, maybe two out of that gram of methamphetamine for just over sixteen dollars. And I'm telling you the demand has not gone down. There's no indication, no evidence whatsoever that says we have less of an appetite here in Wyoming for methamphetamine or across the country. It is just purely supply. Everything is supply and demand in the drug world, and the supply has has pushed those prices down. <coughs> Talked a little bit about heroin, so I'll go through that pretty quick. Uh, we saw, oh, I took out a lot of those slides, so uh, I, I realized that it's almost done. We almost don't deal with it, so I limited my slides, obviously. But we dealt with the, the black tar heroin probably the most. We did see China White. Um, the black tar heroin, uh, which I don't, oh, actually, it's up there on the scale. It's very sticky. I mean, literally, it looks like the black tar that you see on a hot summer day in a in a parking lot, you could confuse it for that. Cocaine, we like I said, we're starting to see a resurgence of cocaine. The other interesting thing about cocaine is cocaine's prices remain high. So as if they mix fentanyl and cocaine, they can increase the price and they can sell it for more. And we just one marketing aspect between mixing those two. Uh, you see some guns in there. Again, these are local pictures. Uh, and I'll talk more about guns uh, later on. That's that true mark I talked about. That thing, it's got a laser. Uh, the, the great benefit of that is special like powder cocaine or powdered fentanyl is, you know, we didn't have to get our hands on it. We didn't have to use a traditional test kit. We could just zap it through the plastic and find out that it was uh, fentanyl. Marijuana, uh, I understand, I don't know if you made it to the presentation, but a couple weeks ago, no, a couple months ago, a couple months ago, yeah, presentation on, uh, on marijuana, and they, and she can talk way more, I've listened to, to her talk, she can say way more than I can, so I'll be rather quick on marijuana. So, you may know the story of, well, everybody knows 420 means, you know, 420 at, on the clock, or means go out and smoke marijuana, or 420 just means marijuana. So then they came up with the 710, and I, you know, they probably worked a long time on this, but they figured out that if they wanted to say oil, they use 710, and that means that it's something besides the plant version of it. It's gummies, wax, oil, something like that. Uh, here from a lot, like if you're, you know, in the, if you're talking about plant material, you know, you're too old to be smoking weed anymore because everything's the, the new, it's all the, 
the gummies and the and waxes and baths and all that good stuff. But we still see plenty of marijuana plant, which is in the pink on the far left. And then we go into wax and edibles. This is uh, DCI seizures, not not numbers from our state crime lab, just numbers from our operations site. Uh, we still we struggled again with this this year. Um, as I mentioned, like trying to get some sort of criminal offense for the edibles. It's just there's a criminal offense, but everybody, all the prosecutors are only comfortable with charging a misdemeanor. So you can have three ounces of plant material, and that's a felony. You can have a truckload of edibles, and it's a misdemeanor. We just can't seem to get past that hump and get that legislation uh, figured out. 2019, we legalized hemp, which complicated things more uh, because people would, you know, I, I got a report one day uh, that, you know, they, these people have a hemp license, but they're growing weed in their house. And how do I know it's weed? Because they tell me it's weed, uh, marijuana. So I, well, this is complicating things. I'm going to call the Department of Agriculture, who is supposed to monitor these uh, grows of, of hemp, and see if they can go do an inspection. I mean, that's their that's what their job is now. And they then I learned that no, they take the license. They only do the inspection at the time of harvest. And if they say their plants die, then there's never an inspection done. So. In other words, they couldn't do anything. And I couldn't do anything, because I couldn't meet probable cause, uh, because I can't, she, she was told it was marijuana, but that's not enough to convince a judge. So we, we did nothing. Uh, and who knows, uh, I don't know how their crop turned out, but uh, uh, that was, we just couldn't do anything within our power. I kind of touched on that. All the different times of marijuana, you know, we're, we're dealing more and more with these type of products than, you know, your plant material. Including these, one day I go out, whenever I heard of chips, and I see in our hallway is line, like from me to the wall over there, of chips, and they're taking pictures of them. What are you guys doing? Uh, never had seen the chips before, but as you can see on the bottom of these, it's got the THC, and that's wasn't that wasn't those I pulled these off of the internet but it was the same thing that was lying in my hallways that day uh, so you know we, we continue to go back and forth on marijuana legalization uh, one of you know these are you know from different reports talking about uh, all the negative consequences that Colorado mostly has seen with with marijuana legalization you know that's whether that be DUIs, school suspensions, emergency room visits, uh, you know, every major that they could probably measure, uh, you know, use at age and all that, those types of things. And everything is, is pretty negative on this, this slide. Uh, and then the final slide is, will represent just how much money they bring into their state budget from from marijuana sales, which is less than 1% of their entire state budget. So the whole, we're gonna get rich off of this, that time has passed, you know, there's too many other states, there's, uh, there's no way Wyoming is going to get rich off of marijuana sales. There's, we have a minimal population base, nobody's gonna travel in and buy marijuana here, uh, and then we're gonna have all these other consequences. Yet it still continues to be a debate. Uh, wrapping it up, so moving a little bit away from from drugs, but directly related to it. And you know, we saw we've seen an increase in gun seizures over the years. In 2022, we saw in just the central team alone, we saw 131 percent increase in guns seized along with drugs. Uh, in 2020, 20, I'm sorry, in 2022, we also saw the most officer-involved shootings that we've ever seen in a year. We had 15 officer-involved shootings. And from working those cases, I'll tell you that most 
all of those cases of officer involved shootings also are related to some drug crime one way or another. Uh, so different strategies. Uh, so for criminal enforcement, um, we'll take tips. You know, that's where we start a lot of these cases is, you know, my neighbor is, something's going on over there. People are coming on sh for short-term visits. Uh, they're sketchy, you know, they're uh, in and out of the house. They're fighting, things like that. Uh, a lot of times that's where we start our case. So that's whether it's be a tip to, you know, your police department, your sheriff's department, whether you use crime stoppers, uh, all those things make a difference and they start helping us point our attention in the right direction. On the prevention side, uh, I like to do things like this. I'd say that's uh, one method, but we also got, you know, why we talk out there for Wyoming, why we talk. Uh, the DEA, one pill can kill. Um, National Guard counter drug here in Wyoming recently set up uh, a drug demand reduction outreach. Uh, so if anybody's interested, my email address will be here momentarily. If you want somebody else to come and talk about uh, drugs and, uh, well, kind of the A to Z about drug stuff, I'll let me know because the counter drug program is also doing that. And they, they've got people specifically set up that that's, that's their job, you know, Monday through Friday. I have multitudes of jobs, uh, and, but I enjoy doing these presentations. I think they're very worthwhile, so I, I like to do these also. Uh, school resource officers, never was a school resource officer, um, worked with some of them. I always think that that's a very valuable asset as we tried just recently after 2020 to move uh, school resource officers out of the schools in different states. Um, I just find that that's a, that's a bad term. Um, I think they do a lot for educational purposes. Uh, drug endangered children, so DEC. Um, we only have two DEC organizations in the state of Wyoming, and that's in Cheyenne and, and Casper. So Detroit County and Laramie County, more specifically, I should say. Uh, it's it's an alliance of different people coming together to try to uh, weed out drugs from, from homes. At least, at least 2019. Um, so it, it's something that can uh, be deployed in any any city, um, any town. And we're trying to get a, a statewide director. I think that's still in the talks. Also, we once had a statewide director to kind of help that those programs move along. Uh, and I think that might be coming back. And real quick, so what is our purpose of, of enforcement? What are we trying to do? Sometimes I think I should put this slide at the beginning, but uh, now you've seen all the drugs, so now you can hear why, why we're doing that. You know, our mission out there with DCI is to disrupt drug cartels, uh, dismantle drug trafficking organizations, which is a lot often associated with cartels, uh, stop drug violence. Again, we had another murder over in Casper that's a drug related recently. Um, we just had a commission over in Casper, you know, a drug-related murder. Uh, prevention of drug, um, drug endangered children, not going to talk about that. Uh, less in crimes tied, tied to drugs, so homicide assaults, retail theft, burglary. It's one of my favorite things over the years to have a new detective and assign um, at, you know, like Casper Police Department. And then within two months, they're up at our office saying all my suspects for burglaries or retail thefts are all associated with your guys' uh, drug crimes. Yes, absolutely. That They go hand in hand. Uh, car thefts, frauds, forgery, child abuse, neglect, officer involved shootings, I talked about that. Less in overdoses, obviously, and just basically less in addiction and just try to make people's lives just a little bit better. With that, oh, a little six minutes over. <laughs> Questions? I know I threw a lot of information out. Um, thoughts? Wonder why? I, yes? Do you happen to know if other major countries like the UK, Japan, whatever, have the same drug problem that the US does? Uh, I think yes and no. Uh, some absolutely yes, but a lot, like, I, I get the impression like Japan just doesn't tolerate this. 
and they don't have that type of problems. I mean, there's some countries that you know you're still likely going to you know face some sort of um, like maybe you're not going to get your hand cut off like when you're stealing something, but it's almost like that. There's still some very very harsh punishment uh, in some countries that seems like it deters this, and I think you know we. We're, we're terrible as Americans. We got all this money and all this uh, desire for addictive things like drugs. You know, just taking trips to Mexico, they just, I find it interesting. I mean, you don't see some of what we see in the States down there in Mexico. I know that that's where the drugs are manufactured. I know that's where the cartels are. And I know there's dangerous, dangerous places, but you don't see as you walk around Cancun, Playa, Puerto Vallarta, you know, places Acapulco, as I walk through the cities, you just don't see, you know, what I just got done seeing in San Diego when I was there over the weekend, or what I saw in Chicago, you know, three, four weeks ago when I was over there. You know, you just don't see the, that, you know, terrible display of, you know, people that are homeless, and, and so much of that is drug addiction. You know, one crazy that was following us around this weekend, you know, it's like, oh my gosh, you know. Or one one guy I looked at, I'm like, you gotta be 20, 22 years old, you know, what are you doing? How did you end up here? But I just know so often that's um, because of drugs, just because of the work I've done. So not a great answer, I don't, I don't have that much you knowledge. Know why the U.S. doesn't learn <laughs> and somehow change this. Yeah, we, we have so much money that other places don't, so we can afford to to feed this this dragon, you know. And that's what that Mexico looks at it that way, you know. They they laugh at us in a sense, like oh, you dumb greedy Americans, you know. You know, you just you just keep sending us more and more money, uh, billions of dollars. You know, I think it's you know you know forty to a hundred billion dollars a year. Um, that's crossing our border to, to feed this drug market. Uh, it's, it's incredible, yeah. Other questions? Is there a central place which has contact information for different types of whatever problems if we run into it and we think that we need to get some help for somebody? Is there a website or something that, that people can go to? That, um. I would say that we could do better. I mean, I know that if you start Googling out, uh, you know. Like those ones you listed, those different organizations you listed. I mean, is there. Yeah, I mean, all those have, have some web, page, web pages if you're talking about why we talk, DEA, one pill can kill. Um, and I know that, you know, if you. There, it's out there, but I wouldn't say I could point you to one web page. Okay. And it is. I would say Why We Talk is a great resource, and our coalition is in the process of rebuilding our website. That would, it, I'm not going to say it can be a one stop shop, but that will have a lot of those connections to those resources on it. Okay. Um, but Why We yeah. Talk does have, they've done a lot of work with, I was um, kind of on that development committee when they first started for that project, and there's a lot of research to have on those kind of things. That, that would be the, I, I guess I would echo that. Yeah. yeah, that's probably the best web page that I would say for Wyoming. Yeah, why would we talk? The DEA or, you know, um, I mean, I have some resources available that, like SAMHSA has some resources. Um, sure, DFC, there's several of those that have Very resources. Nice. Thank you. Thank you. So. Thank you. Other questions, thoughts, ideas? Why don't we? X, Y, Z. <laughs> yes? So, I, I don't know, I just hear that there's huge drug problems on Indian reservations. Is that the case in Wyoming to you? I would say that it's comparable. I don't, I don't know if I would say, now granted, and keep in mind, I don't do enforcement on the, the reservations. Uh, I do, but what we do have within DCI is we have task force officers that have been assigned and given credentials to work on the reservation. So I see those cases come through, and I can say I, I've seen 
Um, a good amount of overdose cases come through from the reservation, uh, but they also would rival, you know, a Casper or Cheyenne or um, even, you know, Riverton City proper. So they definitely, they definitely do, but I couldn't point to it and say that, oh yeah, it's, it's worse there than it is in uh, Douglas, Wyoming, that thing. Uh, but it's, it's equally as bad, I would, I would venture to say. Anything what, else? What are the numbers like, maybe in percentages, if you know, between a size like Cheyenne or Casper, or a town like Newcastle or Sundance, these smaller towns like that? Well, everything's proportional, right, to, to population. So everybody, every town's problem is, is a serious problem to that town. Uh, I, but, you know, the Cheyennes and the Caspers get a little bit more, uh, they have a little bit higher volume of drugs because they act as like a mini, a mini hub city. So, you know, Denver, in the whole scheme of the United States, is definitely a, a, a city to send drugs to, to be distributed out in smaller amounts from there. But you see a distributor that's in Casper, they'll go down to Denver, they'll pick up several pounds of, of drugs and bring it back to Casper, knowing that those drugs are gonna go, in, and we see every which way, you know, it's like going over to Whirlwind, it's going up to, Buffalo and Sheridan and Gillette and Douglas and over this direction. So, you know, it acts as a main hub for distribution. So, which factors into, you know, we can't be everywhere and working drug problems everywhere. So sometimes as in our business of DCI, we have to focus on where are those hubs and how can we dismantle that organization? Because if we can take out those mm -hmm. people, we can take care of the problems for all these outlying communities uh, because that's where they're going to get their drugs. Not everybody can go down to Denver and pick up drugs. Cheyenne is a little bit different. Uh, you know, working in Casper all these years, you know, the distributors there, the, the drug dealers there, they go down to Denver and they pick up a big quantity because they don't want to make that four hour drive. Where in Cheyenne, you know, they can be in the northern part of, of Denver in an hour and a half, you know, an hour, an hour and a half. And so they pick up smaller quantities, so they're a little bit more frequent runs, and Casper is a little uh, less often. Now, I talk about that, but they're, you know, every community, including, like, I mean, I know cases in Sheridan where they're driving down uh, to Denver, uh, even cases over in the Bighorn Basin, you know, and that's a, that's a big drive. Uh, but they also, the quantities were big, but maybe not as big because they just don't have that population to distribute it to. So we definitely have areas in our state that seize more drugs and, and so forth, but every community uh, has has its own problem for sure. I mean, we, we have an office in Afton, you know, they seize drugs. You know, they have drug cases, they have drug investigations, trust me. They're not sitting over there twiddling their thumbs. They got plenty of work to do. So every community is affected. Anything else? Well, I hope uh, hope you walked away with something today, uh, and I appreciate your time. Thank you. To the weekly printed version of the newsletter journal, we also promote our community and share important information on our award-winning website, newslj.com, and in our weekly email newsletter, Nuke Now. We also connect with readers through various social media platforms and invite you to check us out on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can even take a look at a recent meeting of the City Council, School Board, or County Commission on our YouTube channel. We do hope that you will go to newslj.com and subscribe today, and we look forward to making all of our great content available to you. But regardless of your level of support, we thank you from the bottom of our hearts for doing your part to preserve a free and independent local press.